What's up, journeyers? Welcome to today's Tuesday Live training. We are talking about how to be consistent when you are managing your money, which is something that I have heard over and over and over again that people say, I just don't know how to be consistent, or I feel like I'll try something and then like it doesn't work, and I just get really frustrated. And it's a really common, um, it's a common concern, right? Because you're told like you have to be consistent. You have to be consistent and you're told that if you try something and you can't stick to it, then there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with the system. There's something wrong, right? If you can't stick to a system. And so we've got to figure out what this actually looks like, because the truth is, if you don't stick to some sort of system, you'll never get anywhere, right? You do have to do something, right? Like, of course it logged me out of my notes. So. I wanted to talk about this because I want to talk about what consistency really is. The dictionary definition of consistency is actually really interesting. It's the uh, the quality or effect of staying the same at different times, especially the quality or effect of being good each time. In other words, every time you do it, you do it the same way and you do it well. That means consistency is almost like a lead in to perfection. And you almost want to be like, what? I can't do that. Like you can't be perfect at things. It's literally unattainable to be perfect. And so when you think about this idea of like, you try this, a system, right? You try a money management system, you try budgeting, you try tracking, whatever it is that you're trying and it feels really clunky and it gets frustrating and like, parts of it aren't working and it just becomes easier for you to just not do it, right? And then you become less consistent and then it becomes much, much more difficult to pass up. I posted uh, a while back in here, one of the things that I am pretty consistent with is when I get a notification from my budgeting app that I have um, transactions that need to be added, I click it. I add those transactions, like I approve them and categorize them and move on with my day. I like doing it that way. I like being consistent that way because then I'm doing three or four at a time and not more than that. What happened, and I posted about this, what happened was it started to feel like it was too much to think about. I think at one point it was like some of the transactions were Amazon, which meant I was going to have to log on and find out which ones were which. And so I was like, um, I'll come back to it. And then it was like 10 transactions and then it was 15 and then it was 25. And next thing I knew I had like 73 transactions to approve or categorize. And it was so frustrating that it was like, it would be easier to just not pick it back up. Right. Because that's what happens when you start to lose your consistency, it gets really frustrating and much more difficult to pick that ball back up. Right. And so there's a couple reasons why this happens. When it's a new system, right? When it's a new system to you, one of the reasons why it's hard to stay consistent is simply because you didn't give enough time for that system to become familiar. Because the truth is that any change you make, any new thing you implement, no matter how positive it is, right? No matter how good it is for you, is gonna feel really uncomfortable until it also becomes familiar. So if you don't actually allow it time to become familiar, it's always going to feel uncomfortable. And as it feels uncomfortable, you are more and more likely to become less consistent with it because it feels uncomfortable, right? That is totally normal. That is your brain trying to protect you. We talked about this. Your brain would rather be right than happy, right? And so remember, as you start to implement new things, as you start to implement a system, you do have to give it a chance to work or give it a chance to not work. You have to give it a chance to become familiar. When you do that and you're like, okay, this is familiar. I've been doing this for a while now, still not working. Now you can say, okay, it's the system, right? Whereas if you don't really even give it enough time, you never know. After a little while, you'll be like, oh my gosh, I actually really like this. Oh, this is working. Oh, I found this trick that I can add, right? And so give it time to actually work or not work before you let yourself fall off of it just because it's uncomfortable. Another reason why it's hard to stay consistent is what I just alluded to, and that is that the system itself is actually not working, 
right? Maybe it doesn't work for your brain. Maybe it doesn't work for your situation or scenario, right? There's people that teach monthly budgeting where you put your entire month uh, in and you do that, but their income's different every month, or maybe they get paid, you know, weekly or biweekly. So some months they have three paychecks and that part messes with you, right? Um, and so maybe it's the system itself. Maybe it's actually not working for you. It is possible, right? There is no perfect money system. You don't have to stick with this perfect system just because the experts say it's perfect. For me and for um, maybe about half of my clients, I was going to say a majority, but it's probably about half. The budgeting software YNAB is incredible. It's amazing. I will, I will sing its praises to the end of the earth, right? But I also have clients who are like, um, nope, that does not work for my brain. I can't handle that. I want to do it this way. Perfect, right? So remember that you don't have to stick with a certain system. We talk about consistency, right? Is like doing the same thing again and again and doing it the same way every time. And have you guys heard of the definition of insanity? Doing something over and over and over the same way and expecting different results. That is the definition of insanity. So if you are creating some consistency of action and it's still not working, that's when you get to go, oh, it, this one just doesn't work, right? Let's do something different. That decision to change course, to do something else doesn't mean that you are inconsistent. It means you are choosing to find something that works. And so what's the best way to actually create consistency in your money management process that feels good? You have to find a system that works and you have to stick with it long enough to know if it's working or not working. So there's three steps I wanna give you guys to create this consistency system, system that works. And again, Every single person, every single brain, every single scenario, every single life situation will require a slightly different system. Even for all of my clients that use YNAB, every single one of them uses it differently. There's some little feature that they use. I know Liz um, likes to keep all of her savings uh, tracked specifically in categories. I personally don't do that. Um, I have clients that do theirs separated by uh, whether it's a, a monthly bill or whether it is um, a, you know, a, a variable expense, right? Me, I categorize things by like what it is. I have like housing, transportation, food, right? Every single person who I've worked with, even in that same kind of budget software still has their own system, right? And so you have to find that one that works and you have to stick with it until you find that sweet spot. So three steps to creating this consistency within a system. Number one is what results do you actually want from that system? What does it need to do for you? What are you actually trying to accomplish? Um, what do you want it to feel like? Because if you don't actually know what um, the results should be of this process, then it's hard to know if it's working or not, right? You can beat yourself all by all day long. Like, it's not working. Be like, what's not working? And like, oh, I don't know. Well, what do you want it to do? I don't know. It just doesn't feel like it's working, okay? So number one, what does working look like? What results do you want out of a system that you pick up that you can be consistent with? Number two, evaluate what's not working and why, right? In whatever you're doing now, which part of it isn't working? What result do you not have, right? Um, and does the system you're using even have a process to get you that result, right? Maybe you're like, oh, I want to make sure that I can have sinking funds set up and save for these four different things. Okay, what in your system right now, how, what are you doing to do that? And you're like, I don't know, right? Or I'm just transferring money to my savings account. Okay, so how are you tracking what's for what? Oh my gosh, I'm not. Okay, so does your system even have a process to get you that result of knowing what you have saved for each of those different things? And so which aspect isn't working, right? Is it that the process isn't working? If the process you're using isn't working, like you don't have a tracking system for your sinking funds, whatever it is, um, why not, right? What is it? Sometimes it's, oh, this system doesn't work for me. Why not? Well, because I'm not doing it. Oh, you're not doing it at all? Okay, implement it first and figure out what's not working. Maybe it's that your brain literally just cannot think in numbers, right? Maybe you need to think in pictures. And so you need to start doing things that 
um, show you visually how much money you have left in a category as opposed to just looking at numbers, right? So is it the system itself that's not working? And if not, why not? So first we figured out what we want to accomplish, right? What does working look like? We figured out what's not working and why, right? Is it the way you think? Is it the time you're having to put into it? What is it that's not working? Because once you know what's not working, that is what helps you to reflect and refine and create a system that does, right? Because it's easy to be consistent when it's working, right? When things are going well, it's kind of like guiding. When it's going really well and you're seeing the results you wanna see, it's easy to be consistent, right? So what results do you want? What's not working and why? And then use that information to find what works. So for the pieces that feel like they're still a struggle, ask yourself, what could I do differently within this? Um, that would make it feel good, that would make it feel easy? What could I do differently? What would be a different way to do this? One of my clients literally tracks her sinking funds on like a legal pad and it works for her. She has her legal pad, she knows where it is, she knows where to find it, right? That is how she tracks her sinking funds. I have a spreadsheet and my other client, Liz, has it in her YNAB software. We all do it differently, but you have to find the piece that feels good, right? The piece that feels like you can keep up with it. Um, what system, routine, ritual, process can you put in place that would make it feel easier, right? What can you put in place? Maybe you need something visual in front of your face. You need sticky notes, right? Maybe you need to get it onto a physical piece of paper because there's something about writing that impacts things for you, right? What is that that will make it feel like it fits for you based on what you've learned about what you want it to do and what's not working, right? Maybe you hate technology, get a notebook. Okay. Um, and then as you're starting to look at, um, finding what does work, ask yourself, how will I know if this is working as you start to reflect or find and make changes? How will you know if it is working? Because if you don't even know what you're looking for, <laughs> right? Um, you get to find the pieces that work for your brain, right? You get to find the pieces that actually fit and feel good. Because again, things that you, changes that you implement will always feel uncomfortable until they are also familiar. But also it's very tough to be consistent with something that isn't getting you what you want, that isn't getting you the results that you want. I did a weight loss program thing. It was like a shot and a pill and a, and a spray under the tongue for 30 days. I got zero results. For the first like two days, three days, I noticed a little difference in my cravings. That was it. It was gone after that, zero results. It is a three month program. People who were doing the first month were getting losing like eight, 12 pounds first month, zero. So did I do the next two months? No. Am I beating myself up for it? No, I was consistent with it for 30 days. I gave it a chance to work or not work. It didn't work, it's not made for me. I move on. I'm finding what works, right? Find the pieces that work. Remember, it's not about the system. This is not, when I talk about consistency, I'm not talking about you need to be able to check a box every day that you did the thing. You need to be able to cross it off your list every day. You need to be able to like be perfect and check, 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 check. It is not about the system. That is not what creates lasting change. It's not. It is about you learning to trust yourself with money. There's a system involved. There's usually a process involved, but this is about you learning to trust yourself with money. And when you give yourself the opportunity to find a system that does work, that you can have some consistency with, it's powerful. And you also need to examine your mindset around it. Are you doing it just to check a box and say that you did it? Or are you doing what brings you fulfillment, right? Are you seeking consistency for the sake of consistency? Or are you actually trying to build uh, this level of fulfillment that only comes from being persistent with what you're trying to accomplish, right? So that is what we're going to talk about in Intuitive Money Mindset Society. We're about to jump over there in about 10 minutes. And we're going to talk about consistency versus persistence. We're going to talk about what is it, what is the difference between just being consistent with something and being persistent in a process and which one is more important, right? 
What are the pros and cons? How do we build that into our money mindset when we start building systems? Because strategy is good, but strategy and mindset combined is where the power really is. So if you're not an intuitive money mindset society and you want to jump over there, I still have a couple of founder spots left. Um, Patricia just grabbed one. So there is one less founder spot. Um, I'm going to just drop the link. Um, where am I going to drop the link? I'm going to drop it in the post details. I'll drop it in the comments too. Um, but a lot of times it doesn't show up. Um, technology. There you go. So if you want to jump into Intuitive Money Mindset Society, there's still a couple of founder spots left. You get $10 off per month for your first year. It is only $37 a month to get weekly mindset trainings, prompts, accountability, a place to celebrate, a place to share with that community. All right, guys, I love you. I hope that was helpful. Go out and find your ways to create a consistent system that feels good and works for you. As always, trust yourselves, enjoy the journey, and I'll see you next week.